Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I am continuing the analysis into critical thinking. We're going to be in section four of the analysis. I'm thinking of actually creating, uh, extracting from the critical thinking series this, these next few hours worth of lecture because it's going to deal with um, a part of logic known as non-monotonic logic, and I'll talk about that um, in the next few hours. The reason why I want to pull this set out of the critical thinking series is because it stands alone on its own as sort of a progression of all the various forms of logic that I've done on my YouTube uh, channel. We've done, we've done basically everything there is to do now that we're doing, now that I'm doing um, non-monotonic logic. I'm not going to go in, for those of you who fully understand the formalized language of uh, non-monotonic logic, I'm not going to go in and do a super in-depth analysis of it because my intent is to do a critical thinking um, series, which is what I'm doing. And so far, I've, I've gotten a lot, a lot of good feedback on the critical thinking series. I'm glad that you guys enjoy it. It took a lot of time to put it together. It's a very difficult lecture series to um, sort of compile, but I feel like it, it obviously has lots of impl implications outside of just philosophy, which is great. The whole point of this is for it to be useful for you and whatever it is that you do. <clears throat> With respect to the series on um, non-monotonic logic, there really isn't any information at all on the uh, on the internet. There are no other videos. There's there's no one really discussing non-monotonic logic. The only thing that I have accessible is the training that I've had, and you know tons of academic journal articles that are published on a level where the the language, the formal language of non-monotonic logic is just completely inaccessible to the you know the the masses, the general the general audience. So um, you'll have to cut me some slack, right? <laughs> this is this is the first video I, I went in YouTube. I typed in non-monotonic logic. Nothing came up. Um, I looked for videos all around to see if I could find anyone lecture on it. I didn't find any lectures on it. The only thing that exists are textbooks um, and very, very sort of academically um, heady for for um, experts, uh, where the language is just totally inaccessible. So um, this is my first attempt. Hopefully, after I've done this series, uh, or at least a section of the series in critical thinking on mo uh, non-monotonic logic, and I'm going to take a while and go through it. Then hopefully more people will be encouraged to look into it, right? So the whole idea is I want to give you a very, very, you guys know my style now, right? I want to give you a very, very um, introductory account of um, non-monotonic logic. I'm going to go very, very slowly. We'll complicate it gradually. And I'll also, <clears throat> I'll also tell you the, the text that I'm using. The text that I'm using specifically, it's an old, old text. But the discussion of um, the logic is the best in this text. This is a, a 1991 text just simply called Artificial Intelligence. Um, uh, Elaine Rich and Kevin Knight, second, second edition. So for those of you who are going to ask, where am I getting the information for my lecture? Uh, a good majority of it comes from here. Other bits of information come from, as I said, very technical academic journals, um, journal articles on the, the subject. Um, specifically in this, there's, there's just a, an amazing amount of information that's covered in this text with respect to um, non-monotonic logic. And typically, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult to access the, uh, the thought. It's very, very difficult to understand the language, but the authors really put this together uh, very well. So I would, I would recommend the text for anyone trying to look to, um, trying to, look to make sense of the system. Um, another thing that I want to say is, with respect to the critical thinking series, With respect to the critical thinking series, I'm using this book, uh, Critical Thinking, Gary Jason. I had a lot of people ask me that. Um, what book am I using? I'm using this in, in addition to a host of other books, but this book also for critical thinking, amazing, amazing resource. I think it was published in 01, 2001. It's uh, Critical Thinking, Developing Effective Worldview by Gary Jason. Uh, it just, it's super user-friendly, super introductory style. Um, the, the concepts in here are explained very, very well. And I think uh, in education, it's important to make sure that you have access to the understanding, right? You need to be able to understand what the author is uh, discussing. Let me just find one last thing. Get my notes. Get my 
second. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to incorporate uh, non-monotonic logic in this section of the series. One last thing: why why non-monotonic logic? Why something? For those of you who understand it, for the why something so complicated? Why something so complex? Um, parts of logic, uh, as you know, tend to lend themselves. And you're gonna have to. Forgive me, it's morning, so I need to get my coffee, but parts of logic, as you know, lend themselves, quite a bit of logic, uh, lends itself to <clears throat> computer science, computer programming stuff. I'm not an IT guy, I'm not a computer scientist, I don't know computer stuff like that. I do know logic, so there's applicability, there's cross applicability. Why incorporate non-monotonic logic in a lecture series on, um, on critical thinking? What I want you to do, and what you'll see in this lecture today, is that I want you to show you how we progress in complexity in our thought. Like critical thinking is precisely the mode of thinking in which we look at um, disparate pieces of information, information that seems otherwise to be completely disconnected, and we draw a salient line of reasoning connecting all of these bits of information. With respect to that, the statements that we make, and when I use the word statements, um, those of you who have seen my logic lectures, you know this already, but when I use the word statements, I'm just, basically I mean state, statement or proposition in the sense that the, state, the sentence that you're claiming, the, the sentence that you're asserting, um, <clears throat> has a truth function. It can either be true or false, right? In, uh, in non-monotonic logic and in critical thinking, you recognize that the given truth of a thing sometimes isn't just fixed. And I'm going to talk about this in a second, right? It isn't the case that it's always true or it's always false. It's the case that historically it's been truer, it's been more false. The, the truth is, 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 is in question, right? The facts of the matter change. And in critical thinking, uh, a lot of what we actually do in the real world, not just for sort of pedagogical devices, is, is an assessment of truth that changes, that fluctuates, right? It was true at one time, new information was added, that new information transformed the, the nature of the truth, and, uh, and as such, we need to make sense of that. So where uh, non-monotonic logic, um, along with other sort of fuzzy logic, which I'm not going to do, um, other modes of logic, other theoretical frameworks in which we discuss logic, it allows us to access this uncertainty, right? The degrees of variability. So it's a very, 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 very effective method. And my role here, as always, is to introduce the information to you, introduce you to some ideas. Hopefully, I'll be able to get to um, what's known as TMS, uh, Truth Maintenance Systems. Which, which is sort of pictorial diagram representations of non-monotonic reasoning. And that's about as far as I'm going to take it. I don't want to really get into really, really formal, you know, uh, language. But I will introduce you um, to some complex ideas today in, a, in, a, in, a, in quite a bit. So the idea is to introduce this information, let you know, first of all, you know, this is not an easy lecture to prepare because I have no reference. Um, and then encourage you guys who have an understanding or who are interested, go get the text, go do some research on your own, see if you can see if you can make sense of this, and you know upload your own videos on the material so that there's more there's more information out there to be assessed. Okay, so with that um, section four of uh, my critical thinking series. Okay, so this is critical thinking. This is section four, and the section is non-monotonic reasoning. Alright, so uh, first, what, what exactly is it that we'll be doing in this section? How does it relate to the rest of the critical thinking series? The critical thinking series started with um, attempts to make sense of uh, the relationships with respect to uh, contraries, subcontraries, subalternation, contradictions of um, first order predicate logic. So we talked 